Hi, welcome to another edition of North Shore Journal. I'm your host, Walt Kosmowski, and I'd like to introduce my very special guests today. And I have ladies first. I have on my right, Kathy LeMay. And Kathy uh, is a, um, a, or was, because uh, you have retired now, an international opera singer with a lot of very prestigious uh, groups around the world. You have appeared in U.S. and in Europe, mm -hmm. uh, Toronto, Madame Butterfly, Carmen La Traviata, Mozart's Magic Flute, Faust. Mm -hmm. Yes, <laughs> welcome. All of the above. All of Thank the above. Thank you. Nice to be here. And also I have with me, and our, our, our viewers will probably recognize John Archer, well-known person here around in Beverly, who is a, a local businessman, uh, world traveler and lecturer, uh, an actor and singer, art collector, philanthropist. Have I embarrassed you enough, John? No, it sounds like I couldn't make up my mind. <laughs> <laughs> And uh, you'll, you're probably wondering uh, why I brought these two folks here uh, uh, together today. And uh, uh, what is happening is this weekend they are, perf they are going to be performing in a production called Broadway Comes to the Larcom. And if I could ask Robert in the control room to put that. And so this is the logo that um, they'll be performing Sunday at the Larcom. And we're going to talk a little bit about... Um, Broadway comes to the Larcom, but we also have some uh, backstory here mm -hmm. that I think our viewers will really, uh, really enjoy. And uh, uh, I might add that the cast to the, the the production are all local people, right? Mm -hmm. uh, I mean, you live in, in Florida, in Florida now, now, but, but we're going to consider you local because right. you were you were brought Born up in, in Salem it, and grew up in Peabody. In Peabody, yeah. right? So uh, let, let's let's talk about that. I'm going to rewind a little bit, and I, I love these stories, and I want you guys to to uh, to regale us with these stories. But but I'll just set the stage. Uh, uh, John and Kathy performed together uh, for a couple years while in high school musicals uh, and in uh, Guys and Dolls and in Camelot. Mm -hmm. And I think that the, <laughs> the program at the Larcom is going to reprise some of the numbers that they did. Tell us, now tell us how you met and how this, this uh, uh, the production well, of Camelot, because you went to the prep. I of course, that's an all boys school, so Kathy, you didn't go to the prep, so Obviously tell not. us how that was. <laughs> that's John. how I got to the prep, though. They had no girls. <laughs> so tell us, John. It was 55 years ago. Believe it or not. Believe it or not. Yeah. Do you believe it? Yeah. <laughs> and um, no. I was 17 years old. I was 16. Or oh, 15 the first year. The first year, okay. Yeah, 16 the second and, year. And um, I was a senior at St. John's Prep when I was 17. Mm -hmm. And um, about this time of the year is when we did Camelot. Mm -hmm. And I was King Arthur. I was Guinevere. And um, it was a big production. You know, the prep does really good theater. And we actually do. We brought the show to Fenwick too, mm -hmm. after Christmas. That's right. yeah, yeah, we did it. Uh, so we had a reprieve. And back our then. parents were good friends, so I, I th they were looking for girl performers to do the leads. And so, he so knew the, of so our the family. prep would, would would did you have to audition at the, the other schools or what school did Kathy you go? Kathy didn't have to audition. No. Everybody else did except <laughs> Kathy. Well, first of all, I come from a family of eight kids, and yeah. we were known as the Lamy Family Entertainers. So we performed since I was twelve. Mm -hmm. So a lot of the people in the area already knew They're my family, knew and they knew and I was a soprano. Yeah. So when they look, we're looking for soprano for. So they cast you in the role. Well, oh, I that? saw Kathy. At Lynn, I first met you, Kathy, at Lynn City Hall Auditorium. And I don't remember that. And no. you played the part. You were doing the GNS, Gilbert and Sullivan. Oh, okay. And you were... Um, um, Pink, what's her name? Um, but I don't remember. We're old now. We we're don't old. We forget. But, but you're, you're right. My mom was in it. My and father, your father was, in was in it. And Michael yeah. was in it, Michael too. Was in my it? brother okay. Michael. Well, and I, I sat there, and I was... Um, they had the three um, girls. What was I her was name? Uh, mesmerized by you. Really? And I, that's how I said, well, and I love we'll Camelot. Some, and some deep, dark secrets are being yeah, revealed here today. I didn't know that. I folks, you're hearing it first here, folks. <laughs> <laughs> and so we were doing the, the show, Camelot. And, um, yum, yum. Was it yum, yum? Yum, yum. You yum, were yum, yum. 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 How, do we how could I forget that? I was and, yum, yum. Um, you were yum, yum. 
And you were, but you you were extraordinary. You weren't Aww. a normal Thanks. singing high school girl. You know, she had an extraordinary, uh, fabulous voice as Thanks. as a young as a young continues, but yeah. as a young young girl, fifteen probably. So, no, twelve. I well, started yum, voice lessons at twelve. But Yum Yum was fifteen, sixteen. Oh yeah, yeah. probably then. And um, yeah. so we did the play Camelot, and it was a big success. And uh, then, uh, w- so this is interesting because if you know the. The, uh, the, real, the story of Arthur and Guinevere, they actually break up. They don't, they go it's, off. It's not opposite. a happily ever after it's, thing. It's, a, it's actually a true tragedy, Camelot yeah. is. Yeah. Yeah. And Lancelot, who comes in and sort of mixes things up a bit, he doesn't end up with you either. No. And all she three of us. She goes into a nunnery. Yes. She becomes a nun. Yeah. And, and the round Camelot table dissolves. actually dissolves. Yeah. You know, a it's very nun. sad. Yeah. <laughs> it's a sad no. So this is what this is so yeah, that interesting is, <laughs> is that Guinevere and Arthur, after fifty five years, have reunited. Yes. And now, now tell me where 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 did the idea to do this uh, come from? You guys obviously have have you kept in touch all of these a years? A little. And John was actually very close friends with my brother Michael. Okay. Who passed two years ago. And some of her other brothers. And a, a lot of Phil, my family. Yeah. He, he knows them. And Michael had passed, and John didn't realize that, and so he called to say send his condolences and how sorry he was and how much he loved Mike. And he just said, "Do you still sing?" And I said, well, not since Michael passed, because he still played piano in Orlando, where I live in Florida. And I would always perform with him. And that was because I retired from opera many years ago. So that was my only chance to really get out and sing. So he said, do you sing anymore? We do these shows up here. And John has been doing them for years in Little Theater in Mm -hmm. the area. Yeah, we're going to talk about that as well. And so that's kind of how it happened. And and he said, would you consider coming up to... Everybody would love to come and... Everyone remembers the Lamy family. I said, John, they're all dead. We're 70. (laughs) So so when did this conversation take place? Last December. Last December. December. Okay, so not even a year yet. Not not Not, quite a year, yeah. Okay. And we pre- we did the show twice at Glen Magna, right? In Danvers, at, in, Danvers. in July, yeah. in, in July, July, yeah. July fourteenth yeah. and fifteenth. Yeah. yeah, and we had good houses, and it went well. It was fun. It, it was, was yeah. a lot we of fun. we just. It was just a lot of fun. It was fun because we made fun of ourselves. I'm supposed to be 16 years old, but I'm 71, so <laughs> use so, your imagination. So who, who corralled in all the talent and the musicians and the rest of the performers? I, did. That, I, so I, did. I did. There's only a few. There's Tom Edmund, who was a wonderful baritone. He's And then Holly Zagariah is our music uh, director, and yeah. she's she herself has a beautiful voice, and we do she sings a few numbers show. together, yeah, yeah, and uh, so there's only just the four of us, yeah, and and I believe that this is this is going to be uh, 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 for the benefit of the Larkham the Theater, Lark- right? Larkham so it's a, Theater, a fundraiser, yeah. if I can call it that, yeah. mm-hmm. but and I think there's there Larkham is celebrating its hundredth. And tenth, and tenth, and tenth, and tenth yeah. birthday, birthday yeah. next week. Uh, next yeah, week next week. Mount Crit, Mount Crit. But you know, before we go any further, I think our audience deserves to hear you sing. I'm not going to embarrass not you. Um, <laughs> no, no. We have. Uh, I, I have. A, I have a little snippet here from a production. Maybe you can set the stage. You know what this is. Tell us what's going this on. This was here. a very controversial, well-known. Um, performance that I did of Madame Butterfly that was a Ken Russell performance. Right. Uh, he was the director. Right. We did it at the Spoleto Festival here in the States and then also in Spoleto, Italy. In Italy and this yeah. is from Rai Television, which is the right. the interna- it- Italy television. Yeah. And I've been looking for a recording of that performance for many, many years and somebody, lo and behold, put it on YouTube yeah. and a friend of mine called and said, you know you're on YouTube doing Madame Butterfly from yeah. Italy mm-hmm. <laughs> a long time ago. <laughs> So, and I said no, and so that's so, the only the only yeah, one I've ever seen. Right. From so the this television. is this is this is where we got this clip. I took this clip off, so from it's YouTube. only about thirty seconds. But I think the the clip on on YouTube is like twenty minutes or something. Yeah, it's I'm the whole love duet. From, it, okay. From Adam so if Robert Robert in the control room, if you could run this uh, clip for us.
No, absolutely, absolutely beautiful. <laughs> Thank beautiful, you. It's beautiful. nice to have. I, I'm that was what, in 1983? 86, I believe it 86, was. 86, 14, yeah. 24. No, it, no, it had to be. My daughter was born in 86, so that had to have been before that. Maybe yeah. it was 83. You, okay, possibly, so about yeah. 35 years ago or yeah. so, whatever yeah, you have. Yeah, oh, long time just ago. absolutely beautiful. Yeah. Absolutely. Let, let's, let's talk about now. You, you were mentioning earlier that you, were, you came from a, from a performing, singing family. Mm -hmm. But now, where did, the, where did the impetus, where did the, the spark finally come from? For you to, I mean, th there's a difference between Camelot and you know opera. opera. Yeah, so that's how, a how, funny story. My yeah. my father, from the time we were kids, would play all the Broadway musicals. He had a beautiful voice too, and he would. All, we'd get up in the morning, and he'd be playing. Um, Oliver and we'd all be singing food, glorious food. And yeah. The whole family would be marching around to Broadway. So I loved Broadway. I wanted to be Julie Andrews. I wanted to be <laughs> that she was my idol and um, that's that's what I thought I could do on Broadway. Unfortunately when I turned eighteen and I graduated from high school, what was on Broadway? Jesus Christ Superstar, Tommy the Rock Opera, nothing I could sing, Grease. It was all um, not Greece. It was all rock, rock and roll. Yeah, yeah. Broadway had they had stopped, and they weren't doing the revivals like they do now. Yeah. So there was no place I could go. So I had a voice teacher in Salem, Mrs. Reed. Her name was Blanche Reed, and she said, "Kathy, you should sing opera. You have an operatic voice. You have a classical." And I said, "No, I don't know anything about opera. I don't want to sing opera." So she said, "How about if I send you um, to an audition for this school called Curtis Institute of Music, which is in Philadelphia? It's a very well." Known music school, and they only accept, I think, 10 singers in their opera department there. Uh, Rudolf Serkin, famous pianist, was yeah. the president of the school. And I said, no, no, no. And she said, well, I'm going to I'm gonna get the information. So my father said, at least try it, Kathy. And it's a full scholarship. Everything's paid for. Yeah. So he went with me to Philadelphia, and yet again, <laughs> like my Miss Peabody story, <laughs> I, I got in. And I was devastated because I really didn't know anything about opera. But once I got there, I had a wonderful teacher. And H had you pl uh, rehearsed a p part that you I, I, when I won, when I did the Miss Peabody contest that my mother forced me into doing for the, uh. for the scholarship, yeah. <laughs> I, she, I learned, she taught me Visi d'Arte from Tosca, mm -hmm. which is a very uh. heavy, big, so, so way you, too young to be singing it, but that's what she taught me. Yeah. So I auditioned with the same thing I sang at Peabody and High And you School. wowed them. I got in. <laughs> they had she two, wowed them. She I wowed met two, them. two people from the whole United States and Europe, too. I mean, it was an all international yeah, school. Yeah, yeah. So that's how I got into now, opera. Now, and I, I fell in love with it. Yeah. And now you've performed with, with, the, with the Cleveland Opera, I think. With the I New was at New York City Opera for and many you were, years. And you were, you were on, how, how would you call it, on, on staff or engaged with them? Or you I, was, under I was a member of the New York City uh, Opera yeah. for, I think, eight years. Eight years, yeah. And but I also toured around Europe and yeah. I, I saw them. Kathy in La Traviata singing uh, Violetta at Lincoln Center, right? At, at City Lincoln, Opera, at City Opera, at Lincoln yeah. Center. Yeah. And yeah. Beverly Sills was my boss for many, I, many I years. I was going to ask you. You probably rubbed elbows with some oh, of the yeah. greatest. She, we she great sang friends. Butterfly for Sarah Caldwell, also. Oh, many times. Yes. Yeah. And Boston. I know you sang. Um, Violetta for Sarah, too, I think, mm -hmm. yeah. yeah. And then he did a lot and, of concert And Richard Dyer, the music critic for the Boston Globe, adored you. He always gave me great reviews. He loved, he totally But I didn't know he was you. a good friend of John's, so now I think <laughs> I know <laughs> why I got the reviews. I had, I had no influence, believe me. I had no influence. He was always very, very, very <laughs> no, he, you know, he, was, he was considered maybe the number one music critic in the country. He was at the time, yeah. yeah. Um, and he, uh, he, he just me. loved Kathy. Kathy well, there, was, it helps you know. to have friends in the press, right? It does. Now, yeah. now Kathy, <laughs> are there any, like, uh, uh, moments uh, in your career that really stand out to you uh, because of oh. uh, any, any one or two really spectacular things that stay with you and... You know, there's so many. I can't even. I've worked with. I worked with Victor Borger. Was my um, first first opera he ever conducted, was the in Cleveland Opera mm -hmm. doing the Magic Flute. That was amazing. Yeah. Because he was such a well known comedian, yeah. and he wanted. Oh, but yeah. he loved music, oh, yeah. and he wanted. Yeah, you to don't conduct. associate him with opera. No. At least a common person first doesn't, because he always does his shtick with the piano That's and the right. jo well, jokes was and also everything. An excellent pianist. Mm hmm. And there were times that he would actually, he was a beautiful classical pianist, yeah. and he would often, you know, demand equal time as a seriously piano player to his joke piano. Mm -hmm. yeah. Now, John, uh, you know, we, we talked a little about your, your uh, various endeavors throughout your career, a real renaissance man, and I guess you've had this, 
closet muse in you uh, of being a, a thespian and a singer, although you 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 have performed and, and well, and, it really hasn't been closet. I've been in shows since high school. Yeah, we put shows down on in the basement of our house, and I loved it then. I you still do with, little. Yeah, Don't and and I still do the Marble little, little Theater. We I've done a lot of roles, so I've I've just continued to do it for mm -hmm. all these fifty plus He's years. He's a man of many talents. Yeah, well. <laughs> We do know that. So, so you played uh, it with the Marblehead Little Theater, I know. And mm -hmm. tell us about some of the roles you've you've played here um, locally. Well, MLT does great theater. They're one of the oldest community theaters in the country, and um, they did big production of My Fair Lady, and I was played um, Henry Higgins with Ursina as my Liza Doolittle, Ursina Amsler, and we did The Sound of Music. I was Captain Von Trapp. We did Annie. I was. Um, Daddy Warbucks. Daddy Warbucks, yeah. The Wizard of Oz, and I, I was, you know, <laughs> Tin Man. I could go on. Um, <laughs> but I love to sing and dance. I've never had the desire, though, and I people say, well, why? Because he go valued to New York? money more. Well, I, I, <laughs> you, you knew you couldn't make a living. Well, yeah. <laughs> well and I sing all it's the time. Too hard. I sing more than professional singers. Right. No, I don't mean you yeah. couldn't make no. a living yeah. at no. artists in general don't make, don't a lot make of money. money. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, and I so but then I got very career, involved with it's... my insurance agency, and I yeah. like business, mm -hmm. and got terribly involved with the nonprofit world. You know, from the hospice program to I'm still uh, on the, yeah. you know, homeless generous. shelter, and so I I've got very very involved and sang on the side. So it's always been my great desire to continue singing this way. And uh, but still, you know, have a, a the love of the theater. A love of the theater. Yeah. And I do, do you ever love. regret not uh, turning professional? No, not, not really. Not no. one moment. No, not one moment. Yeah. And I, I love plays. I teach a, a theater class at Salem State Lifelong Learning, and I've been there for ten years. And I taught at Regis for fifteen years. Plays. We read plays. We read straight plays. Really? Yeah. Uh. And um, you know, very often a straight play turns into a musical. Mm -hmm. And uh, but we read the you know the 101 base of the how the play oh the musical started yeah and uh, I love it I it totally you know it gets me reading three books a semester and I've done it for you know 15 years yeah fantastic yeah. now what now most of the people are all I know you live in Florida but uh, mm -hmm. so you've come up for this production but are most of the people based uh, that we're going to see uh, at the Larcom are they all local oh they're all local they're, yeah they're all yeah, local. Yeah. Yeah. Local folks here. Now, how have you uh, uh, practiced? How have you, you know, rehearsed? Uh, or, or, <laughs> <laughs> or did, <laughs> tonight? Tonight. <laughs> we Tonight's our dress rehearsal. We, we, have a, rehearsed we have a big rehearsal tonight, and then yeah. we have a, a big rehearsal tomorrow afternoon. But I came in early the last time. Yeah, you came I in came early, in and we've done before. the same. Pretty much, we're tweaking the show a bit. We've added some stuff, and um, we did familiar but, music that we both and we all knew, knew it. I mean, some yeah. of the. These songs we've sang 55 years ago, yeah. and believe it or not, I still have them memorized. Right. All those big, long pieces. Well, yeah. I we have... do some Phantom of the Opera, which, oh, that was a wonderful story. When I went to, I'm um, sorry, I'm going mm -hmm. off the tangent, but no, no, go when ahead. I was in Australia, in Melbourne, Australia, singing Madame Butterfly, my dad passed, which was horrible. And nobody in my family would tell me that he had passed because he had said, you tell Kathy to keep singing because he loved music so much and I'll be with her if something should happen. He didn't know he had yeah. cancer for several years. So I was in Australia and Michael came to be with me after the funeral. I had a performance the night he was buried and um, it was surreal. I was on stage and I swore he was there. I had, I, oh, it, oh, I felt him there. It was unbelievable. What an incredible story. But, but when I finally, Michael came to visit me, we went to see Phantom of Phantom, the Opera yeah. for the first time. I saw it and they sing the song about the girl at the graveside of her dad singing, you know, you were once my, my friend and father. And I just sobbed through the whole thing. But I've oh, been in boy. love with the op with the Phantom of the Opera ever since then. Oh, boy. And did it a lot and with Michael. And we're singing a we're lovely piece. Um, from Phantom together, yeah. so, Sunday night. So, so yeah. tell us a little bit more about. So, what should, what would we what would the audience uh, expect here on Sunday to, to hear from you? So, tell us a little bit about some of the well, numbers. Well, it, it's or a little pottery of bunch. There's some opera arias that Kathy sings, and um, they are. 
Well, the first role I did in college at Boston Conservatory, we did Johnny Skiki. So the O mio Babino Caro, which is a very oh, famous, love everyone oh, loves yeah, it. And I it's short that. and sweet, and I can still do it at 71. I'm not oh, saying, well, John said, sing Traviato, which is high class. That's going to be worth the price of admission, <laughs> just that one number. Yeah. 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 So, and when I won the Boston, the New England um, <sighs> Opera, Metropolitan Opera editions here in New England, I won that too. And I sang 2K di Gelsi Cinta, which is a role from Trotendog. Yeah. So those two have something to do with Boston and here. So those are the two I chose. Yeah. So it's, and they're very short. They're not. Mm-hmm. So people now, don't have to be afraid of them. <laughs> and, and you you retired professionally uh, how long ago? Oh, I'm 71 now. Probably uh, late 40s, so 20, 20 years ago. So, so in that period, uh, have you been doing things like this uh, occasionally to keep your chops? I did <laughs> quite a few uh, concerts and things that I would still do after my career stopped. Um, I still sang a lot in the Orlando area. I did a lot of um, theater things there, and I did some judging of, of the Rollins College and different things. Not Rollins College, I'm sorry, the um, opera company in, in Orlando. I was involved with that. Then I taught voice for several years. Um, and But on the side, because I really needed to make a living, I became a single mom. I was divorced, and my daughter was 13 at the time. So a friend who used to come and hear me sing, we had a restaurant, my ex-husband and I, yeah. and we all sang there. So when that stopped, she offered me a job, um, and which I knew nothing about real estate, or but I knew how to talk to people because I had been in the business for so many years, and she had very wealthy investors that they they uh they build home uh, apartment complexes. Yeah. So I've worked for her almost um, 19 years now. So, so I did that on the side and then sang all around Orlando and Florida. Okay, so it's not like you haven't done anything for all these years. Until <laughs> Michael's passing, I really hadn't sung in the last mm-hmm. two years, probably two years, and then he called. So this is a chance to sing again. Now, have you been contacted by or, or do you expect to see some of your old high school friends or people maybe that were in these productions with you yeah. show well, up at the we theater? Did. We, we did. The, we, one, the yeah. times we did it at Glen Magna this summer, we had uh, a number of people, and I did mention that, you know, Patricia Cornell was in both the shows. We did Guys and Dolls also, uh, second semester, senior year. Yeah. And I played uh, Sky Masters in, and this was Sarah Brown. Right and my, my next-door neighbors that I grew up with, we had eight kids. They had seven back in those days. Um, they, some of them were at the, and I haven't seen them since I was a kid. Oh so they goodness. came. Yeah, so a lot of people from the past were there. It was great. Oh, that's wonderful. It was really nice. That's absolutely yeah. wonderful. Well, th- th- this has been a treat. You guys are awesome. You guys are awesome. So I just want to just wanna repeat for our audience, and maybe Robert can put up the, that uh, uh, logo again. So this is happening this, uh, this Sunday. Um, uh, 2022 Broadway comes to the Larcom, uh, and that's, that's what, 4 o'clock? 4 o'clock is our... Showtime. And actually, the owner of the Larkham Theater came, right? Yes. He and that's came. how this That's happened. how the, yeah, uh, um, Don Crowell. Don Crowell, yes. I, and I know. Lisa, yeah. um, they're lovely people. Yeah. And they, um, they came to the they, they came to see our show. Yeah, no, i And had... um, he has said, could you do the show here at the Larkham? Yeah. And so we figured out a date, and um, they're, they're running that theater beautifully. Yeah. And, you know, it needs a lot of work. It yeah. continues to. It's an old yeah. building. Old yeah. Theater, yeah. Yeah. And um, so this is a, you know, hopefully we'll raise yeah. some money. And with tickets are going very well for the show. Yeah. Mm-hmm. For we'll, we'll, Sunday. I will be there. Oh, My wonderful. wife and I will be there. And, of course, we, uh, we know Don. Don's been a, a guest here. I did uh-huh. I actually did some taping down at the, at the Larcom at the when th- he first bought the about the theater. Uh-huh. Mm-hmm. Uh, I can't wait to see it. We'll yeah, see it. It's, it's, yeah. it's, 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 well, it, it, 19... 13, I believe, uh, and it was a vaudeville house. Yeah. And, um, you know, pre TV and movies, and uh, people came to and Beverly. And it's named after a famous poet that poet I didn't who, realize yeah, that either. Lucy Larkham. Lucy Larkham. Oh, I didn't know that. Yeah, whose poet. house was right where the Larkham Theater is, yeah. ironically. Yeah. yeah. So Beverly is lucky, the Cabot and the Larkham, to have two vaudeville houses. Yeah. You know, they were throughout the whole country. There were 40,000 of them, and think there's like 300 left. Now, that, it was a burlesque house at one time, wasn't it? Oh, well, burlesque, well um, which, it was was, which was, um, you know, vaudeville. Vaudeville without the clothes. <laughs> no, 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 no. You're, I know, He's you're, thinking no, about no, it. Was a, it was a fine arts theater for many years. Oh, well, that's I what they called it. I was a kid growing up. And, okay. Um, 
<laughs> I won't tell you anymore. Okay. <laughs> Did you go, Jack? Because <laughs> your your mother. I was a healthy boy at that time. <laughs> Wasn't it a magic theater? And, they oh, did then the magic, magic company many owned it. Yeah, they well, did yeah, of the anthology of um, stage magic. Yeah, and they there. and they, they the, alternated between the Larcom and the uh, and Cabot and, and yeah. the Cabot yeah. and uh, and uh, yeah, it had a but long, many, long. Was life it ever shut down totally? A little bit in between. Just, yeah. Just yeah. yeah, well, after, after uh, Cesario died, Cesario died. It, went, it went dark. It went black. And then, uh, again, then, you know, we, then we didn't Cromwell's know what was going to happen yeah. to it. And then that, yeah. that conglomerate uh, bought it. And yeah. then they restored the Cabots, had a lot, a lot, a lot of money and facelifting. And oh, I yeah. mean, completely they, revamped yeah. the, the heating and cooling funding, system, the, ch yeah, the seating, everything. Yeah. yeah. No, and, they've done a great job. Of course, yeah. And, and of course, uh, Donnie just hasn't had the capital to, right. to yeah. do all that COVID stuff. Hit, and, and then COVID, COVID hit. And COVID hit. Well, then COVID just hit a number on, you know, it isn't like they could do it remotely. You go to the show or you don't go to the show. Right. Well, so they're, they're, yeah. we wish you a, a full house on Sunday. As I say, I'll, I'll, I'll be there. Anyway, I would like to thank, uh, thank my you. guest, Kathy LeMay. It's Lamey. Lamey, I'm sorry. I knew <laughs> Actually, I would do it's that. Actually, it's a French name. It probably was Lamey at one point, Lamy, but yeah. they changed it, Americanized it to <laughs> I Lame. kept saying, make sure you pronounce <laughs> it correctly. I know, correctly. I, did, I didn't correct you. <laughs> thank you, thank you, Kathy. And John <laughs> Archer, thank you very much, John and Kathy. Thank and you. And I'd like to uh, remind our viewers that you've been watching North Shore Journal I am your host, Walt Kosmowski, and uh, we'll see you next time. Thank you, Walt. Thank you. <laughs>